perhaps the two biggest issues for investors right now, the debt ceiling fight and the Fed's rate hiking campaign. On the former, we are likely to see a vote in the House today. On the latter, we've got new comments from Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester. She tells the Financial Times that she sees no compelling reason to wait before hiking rates again if the data keeps pointing towards hot inflation. Joining us right now to talk about all of this and much more is Peter Orzak. He is the CEO of financial advisory firm Lazard. He's going to be taking over as the CEO of the entire firm on October 1st. This is his first television interview since that announcement was made. Peter, of course, also served as director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Obama. And uh, Peter, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Great to be with you. Congratulations. Thank this you. This is the first time we've gotten to talk to you since the announcement went out. Um, You've got a lot going on with the firm. There's a lot going on in the world, so it's a it's an exciting time to be taking over. Yeah. All right. Let's talk first about the debt ceiling sure. and what you think happened here. You think that this week is something we can count as done for the moment? I think it's very likely to be done. And look, I heard some of the previous commentary. My view of this is you, you can't grade really uh, debt ceiling deals. It's pass fail, and from the business community's perspective, this passes. It takes a risk off the table. Frankly, I think we should get rid of the whole thing altogether in the future, but for now, this is a pass. You don't think that something positive came from from leveraging uh, the debt ceiling to, to get some of the... Uh, would you rather... Would you have rather had a clean debt raise than, than this final product we have now? Uh, again, uh, we're, we're this thing and a clean one, both in the pass category. So uh, no, I, don't, I don't think... It, I mean... No, nothing in it, the COVID funds, the, the work thing, none of that is is okay or, I, or good? None of it's positive? I think you? as you start to dig into the details, no, it's, it's positive, but the biggest positive thing is that we got the debt limit extended for at least two years plus a little. Um, in terms of the individual provisions, there's going to be time to sort through a, a lot of those. I think many people have not actually looked at the CBO score that came out last night. In that terms was of good, what, wasn't it? It was good, but some of the provisions you know, may have... Uh, more complicated effects than you're talking about the work requirements. I mean, and as one changes. example for 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 SNAP, uh, as one example. But look, the big takeaway that here is scored higher when you change right. expanded. Not you're getting reduced. more, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but again, big the the big takeaway here is they got it done. Okay, so the debt deal is done, which turns us to the Fed meeting that's coming up in a couple of weeks. And the latest we've heard, not just from Mester, but from a lot of other Fed presidents, regional Fed presidents, is that they're going to have to raise rates again and that there's no evidence that inflation is slowing yet or is down to where they want it to be near their target. Does that create problems, let's say, for the financial sector? You've got to be able to have a pretty good idea of what you yeah, see. Yeah, look, I think, uh, I mean, Joe, we've talked about this before. I think the Fed has tightened too rapidly. I think it would be mm -hmm. a mistake to tighten again at this point. I actually think inflation is coming down. It's coming down maybe a little bit more slowly than we would have hoped. But the pandemic was a massive shock to the economy and to business. And it's only now that we're kind of getting to the other side of that. So I think it would be a mistake to raise rates, especially in the context of, look, we've got several things going on. In the wake of the debt uh, deal, there is a balance here because there's going to be a lot of treasuries that are going to hit the market. I think it's probably manageable, but you're at the cusp of a potential, uh, you know, too much supply too quickly kind of issue. We still have uh, the regional banking um, situation sitting out there with, you know, availability of credit becoming uh, harder. I just don't see the the imperative to keep raising rates at this point. How, how much? And wait, and one more thing. Sorry. And inflationary expectations over the long term remain very well anchored. There is no urgency to you know, wringing things out of the Look, Jay system. Jay might clearly. argue that you've got to get the inflation problem settled before it really works its way into wages in a big way. But I, I, I hear your point about the regional banks yep. and the, the liquidity issues that are out there. Do you think, a lot of people at this point have said, hey, we're through the problems with the regional banks. Do you think that's the case or no? No, I think a lot of these banks are sitting out there, their uh, deposits are draining to the GSIBs, to the larger banks. Maybe not, you know, as rapidly as during the peak of the crisis, but it's still happening. Uh, and they're, they're having a lot of trouble raising uh, capital. So they're sort of stuck in this, um, I don't want to call it a zombie state, but they're stuck in this intermediate state where they can't go out and raise capital. Deposits are draining. More regulations are likely coming. And frankly, what needs to happen here is the, 
the regulators need to embrace more consolidation in the sector. That is the only solution for a lot of these regional banks. And there still is hesitation among the regulators. Another 25 basis points, another 50 basis points could make a difference for those. It doesn't help because, again, what happens is deposits drain out further as the alternative uh, investments, whether it's money market funds or treasuries or whatever, when the rates go up on those, uh, it becomes less attractive to keep your checking deposits in these regional banks. And so, you know, there will be more. Peter,